what do you get when you cross a know-it-all newspaper columnist with an awkward, unsophisticated everyman? Yeah, uh, well, I'm just not sure about that right now. Welcome to Couch in the Rue. Welcome to Couch in the Rue, presented by Pure Options Precision Crafted Cannabis, where cannabis meets community. Pure Options, good vibes, good people, good product. I'm telling you, if quality means something to you with your cannabis, Pure Options is your place. Visit pureoptions.com to find the location nearest you. They're all over Michigan, Lansing area, west side, east side, a little up north too, Mount Pleasant. And with a purchase of $50 or more, Couch of the Rube listeners get an eighth of Pro Grow, a Pure Options uh, brand. Incredible offer. Great way to let them know you listen and you value them and you value us. And even if you're not spending 50 bucks there, let them know you heard about, uh, heard about them from the show. We appreciate it. Also, our Monday afternoon show presented by our friends at Muskox Quality Flannels. Both Jason and I in respective muskox flannels today, looking good, feeling good. It is a muskox day. The snow is blowing. It's uh, a throwback to February and uh, no better day for a, uh, for, for a muskox. Go to gomuskox.com and, uh, where you can use the promo code HOTH for $15 off your own muskox flannel. You can look as good and feel as good as us. I'll be packing at least two of these for the NCAA tournament down in Charlotte. It's going to be ideal muskox weather. And uh, looking forward to showing it off to that community. People be down there going to be stopping me on the street. Why do you look so good, Couch? Maybe not. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll fix that part in post. But uh, Jason, how you doing, brother? <laughs> What's up, buddy? Yeah, as soon as I saw the snow this morning, I just grabbed the muskox. Yeah. I was like, fuck it. This thing makes me look good. It's cold out. It's ass. You know what else is ass? Last night. What made Having to sweat night? that out last sweat. night. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay. Are we yeah. gonna just want to get into this? Let's now? just dig into our. Uh, let's, let's dig into it. Why don't you I, go first? I actually I didn't prepare. I, I had too much pure options running through my veins during this. I was panicking. They took like the third commercial break, and I'm like, wait a minute, are we out? Is Michigan State out? So then I'm like, look, checking my phone. I'm looking at the team. I'm like, oh, there's a whole another region still. I'm like, wait, but wait a minute, playing game like. I, I was like, man, I should not have smoked this much before I had to figure out all this shit. They're not showing Michigan State. I'm like, is it? are they NIT bound? Jordan, uh, the Michigan fan, of course, he's fucking texting me because I don't know why he cares about college basketball. And he's like, are, is Michigan State in? Like, he's legitimately asking me, not trolling. I was like, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what's happening. I almost texted you. I'm like, are we fucking in or not? And I just, I'd never, I, and I know James Edwards, we might have to have him on at some point to discuss this because on Twitter he was, whispering that he kind of wanted Michigan State to miss the tourney, so Izzo has to rethink his staff recruiting and talent acquisitions. That was his tweet, and he got pretty hammered on that. Like, I, I don't want any part of it. As long as Izzo's here, I want to make this tournament. And I, I, I felt the way it would feel if you missed the tournament because I was so stoned. I, couldn't, I didn't know if they were in or not, so I had that feeling, and it sucked ass. So any of those kind of the whispers of wanting to miss the tournament, F that. F that. I never want to go through that kind of sweat again. As long as Izzo is there, I don't want that. I should just read you my text from James this morning because after he sent that tweet, he started texting me. He's like, man, shit, people are getting on me. MSU, <laughs> MSU fans are crazy, um, which is what he deals with on the Piston side of things all the time. It's funny because James, one of my favorite people in the world, but he hand slaps Pistons fans all the time for being irrational and whatever, and then when it comes to uh, – Michigan State, he becomes this this big baby himself about things, and it's just it's just uh, <laughs> interesting to watch how the how the world works. But see, I don't mind that stuff because James actually he's he actually is saying what he means, right? It's just not like a hot takey kind of thing. Well, to I think get most people are going. saying what they mean. I think they were rethinking it last night. Yes, I think that's where it is. So I'll I'll bleed this into my first hot take here. This is everything that this MSU team deserves. The Izzo deserves, the staff deserves, the players deserve. The fan base? The fan base, probably. But the fan base doesn't really have a role in it. I'll just say this is everything they deserve in terms of the, 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 the players, the coaches, the program, having to go through that sweat. The nine seed with a one seed at home pretty much in, in their path. Two tough matchups to get out of the first weekend in terms of big men and size. Like if this, if this Michigan State team is going to do it, 
it should have to be this way. Not some happy, clappy, friendly matchup that gets them to the Sweet 16 and fires everybody up because they made a run and, and things were really – I mean, there are tougher one seeds. This isn't UConn, I don't think, North Carolina, but they're, they're really good and you're going to be playing in Charlotte essentially in their backyard. Like if, if MSU makes it out of the first weekend, that's a legitimate work done. And, and then you can actually legitimately, I think, celebrate that effort and that performance. And, you know, and then they've got Arizona, who's, you know, mighty tough in the other, other, in the other bracket, which, who would have been a one seed if they hadn't screwed up in the, in the conference tournament, I think. Um, sorry, in the other side of the bracket, the two seed. So I, I just, it was interesting sitting there last night because there was a point where I thought, wait a sec, are they not in? Are these three quick takes going to be on the NIT? I got to brush up on my NIT history. Brush up on lats. I <laughs> brush up on lats. Yeah. He, I might take lats to an NIT game. That would be that might be part of our date. Um, and I think you know Izzo talked about the um, the lack of sleep he had, the anxiety, one of the most anxious days of his career. I said here he said, and so I think there are a couple things. One, I don't agree that making the tournament has or missing the tournament has any value. I just don't. I, I mean, I understand the premise of. It snaps you into something different. It wakes you up. It says, screw it, the streak's over. Just being mediocre and getting into this tournament isn't enough. It'll it'll force Izzo to do something else. But I don't think that's what he's trying to do. Izzo wasn't waking up every year and thinking, let's just get into the tournament. He thought he had a team. You listen to his comments last April. This is not the team he thought he had in terms of where they would be. He thought he had a team that was going to contend. Now, does he need to reevaluate the portal? Absolutely. Don't I think team. four years – will be enough. I think this sweat, this anxiety will be enough for him not to want to feel that again. I don't I don't think there's this sort of malaise of ah this is good enough. He badly wants another title. I just don't buy into that. I just don't think and I think this is enough. I think this sweat, I think a lot of people probably changed their minds. I know I got some texts from people and some tweets from people who were like whatever I said, I you know, I didn't mean it. Uh you know, you know how when you really want something you make all sorts of promises to God that you don't keep? Happens often, yeah. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people were in that mode, you know. Uh, you know, won't uh, it got too real? It got real. Yeah, it got real, real. And that sucked. And a nine seed, I was like, what? A nine seed? They were actually. Why was I panicking? What? What happened? You know? Not only that, they were the top nine seed. There were ten right. spots between them and the cut line, which is uh-huh. pretty remarkable. Um, and there's some debate whether that's justified. I, I I'm not here it's to stick not. up for Michigan State and say they shouldn't have been on the bubble. I'm just. I, I think this is what you, you want if you're an MSU fan. Izzo is still the – that streak is longer than any coach has ever done at one school. That's pretty remarkable. And it, it is also something that does provide value to MSU. Because, number one, they were not going to skip the NIT, I don't think. Oh. I, I, don't, I mean, I, I think Izzo's got too much pride and respect for the sport and that thing. You look at what his old coach Tom Crean said last night, just ripping schools that were, you know, getting rid of the – or not turning down the NIT – um, because he thought it is an opportunity for some kids to play. If kids want to opt out, fine. But you got enough coaches, enough time to do the portal and play games and work with your kids and that use that opportunity. I think Gizzo would have played in it. I do. And it would have been a weird place on Tuesday night at Breslin in, 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 the, in the NIT. Turns out they've been a lot closer to the NIT in other years than this year. Um, Which is crazy when you think about it. Well, this, this team's not an NIT team relative to ability compared to some other years. Like the Miles Bridges' freshman year – that team much closer to an IT team. The the COVID year much closer to an IT team, and and I'll tell you the the Denzel Valentine, Travis Strice team that made the Final Four in 2015 in late January, had a lower ceiling than this group and was uh, more of an NIT type bubble team than than it obviously wound up wound up being. But I, I look I I think this was good for the program. I think it's what they deserved. I think this team's inconsistency. This is the penance for losing at home to Iowa and Ohio State, that all of a sudden you start sweating, and that the fact they were in the last bracket, and um, you know you want a team that got sort of screwed. It's the MSU women, who are I mean they're in a very different place as a program. Maybe this should just be my second take, but they're in a very different place as a program, and so they're happy to be in. They're happy for the opportunity to take a swing at a team like South Carolina in the second round. And the MSU women are nine seed playing at South Carolina. They'll open with North Carolina and then would get South Carolina, who's 32-0 and 0, um, and ferocious. And, like, I know everybody loves Caitlin Clark and the Big Ten and all this. 
there's nothing in the Big Ten like this South Carolina team. And Iowa upset them last year, and I think that pissed them off, something awful. Iowa beat them in the Final Four. That ain't happening again. Um, That's probably your national champion. And that's a rough – for a team that was fourth in the Big Ten, um, that's a rough assignment. They didn't really have that signature win. They took a a lot of good teams to the wire, and that's why they got it. But there are teams that – the difference between the men's and, – and, and I'll get into this a little more in a minute. The the men's and women's uh, fields is that the conference tournaments mean something for the women because they're played a week earlier often. They meant a ton to the seeding for the Big Ten women, for Michigan State, for Michigan, for Nebraska, for, for Iowa, for Ohio State. All that meant much more than it would have in the men's field. So um, keep the Big Ten tournament women's basketball then. And get rid of it in men's. Get rid of it in men's. That's yeah. sort of my, yeah. I mean, I, I, I think we just saw the damage that conference tournaments do. I understand that there is, you want everybody to have something to play for to the end, and, and, and the, the bid stealing isn't always a bad thing that five teams got in that had to win their conference tournaments to get in that weren't, you know, low majors necessarily. Um, but it, it is, the Big Ten tournament itself is a waste of fucking time. It is a waste of time. The only thing that can happen is an injury. The champion, which is a secondary champion anyway, doesn't get to celebrate because it's ten minutes before the brackets. It's just dumb. No need for it in the way it is. If you want, I mean, it certainly needs to be rethought. The Sunday, um, the idea that it just doesn't impact the field and the seeds is is really really makes it absolutely absolutely worthless. What is your next on take? Well, if you think the Big Ten tournament is meaningless, Graham, we talked about it a little bit. I, I think you have to just, you have to get rid of the NIT. You said Izzo wants to play. I think you're right that Izzo wants to play, but if the players, if they had a, like a players only meeting and then talk to Izzo, I don't know if they want to play. I mean, we're talking about Pittsburgh, Pitt, Pitt basketball is, is saying nay to the fucking NIT. Oklahoma basketball is saying nay. I mean, I can understand, and Tom Crean needs to realize this is a completely different era of basketball. To try to talk your players in to go into playing a podunk fucking NIT game for a what are you going to do? Raise the NIT championship to the ban, to, to the to the rafters? Get rid of the NIT. I, I well, get just, it. I get it. Gamblers like it and all that, but I, other than that, who who wants to see their team in the NIT? Well, nobody ideally, but there are a lot of teams that win their what the NIT used to have, and they took away before this year, was that if you won your regular season championship and you're a mid or low major and, and um, even Indiana State, which is in the Missouri, you know, which is in a league that should have its championship in the NCAA, champion in the NCAA tournament and isn't this year. But it used to be, and they're a one seed in the NIT, but it used to be that that gave you something. The NIT had enough prestige that if you were a low major, mid major, it meant something. Let those teams play. The NCAA right now and the conference commissioners are so full of stupid pricks. It's pissing me off. Greg Sankey, Tony Petiti, I'm sorry, both these men, the world, the college football, college basketball world will be better off with both of them gone. The future, Because let me tell you the problem right now. When you get Greg Sankey talking about expanding the field and, and, and needing more opportunities for, for big schools like Michigan State, which had 14 freaking losses. Like, look, I'm glad Michigan State's in. I think it's great for the fan base, great for the show. It's fun for me go, to go down to Charlotte. I'm glad they're playing within an hour and a half of the women so I can cover both events while I'm down there. A lot of things that are cool. Michigan State lost 14 games, had plenty of opportunities. Indiana State went 17-3 and in a top-10 conference and, the, 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 and, and actually had a net ranking in the top 30. It's still a quad one win for Michigan State and gets left out. And I, I don't want to hear these uh, – because the, 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 the problem with that is, and people don't realize it, if you, this is why you should care if you're Michigan State. This is why you should care if you're – a Michigan fan or Ohio State fan or a, a Kentucky fan because the sport does not flourish, does not thrive, does not continue the way it is if those fan bases stop caring. It's one thing to dangerously lose all those really small schools, but when the Missouri Valley, a basketball hotbed league, starts to lose interest, like you already can't build anything because if you have a great year, all your kids transfer to a high major. So that's already hard enough. But then when you have the great special year that Indiana State just have, had, when you go 17-3 and three and win a really good league, and I don't think the metrics accurately understand how difficult that is to, to win. Certainly the people in the room don't understand how hard that is to win. And you still don't get in. So now you can't build anything, and the special year isn't enough unless you win the conference tournament. You're screwed. And in this country, we are too selfish to 
collect like we can get rid of Tony Petiti tomorrow. If Big Ten fans went up in arms and said, We want that guy out, we stormed the Big Ten offices. If if, if the SEC fans went and said, I want that guy out, I won't go to another game. Like in Premier League football, when they tried to do a super league, this is what happened. The biggest clubs, fan bases revolted to protect what was there, including the smaller clubs. They liked the system. They liked the whole thing. They cared about the whole. We don't in this country. So we're going to screw ourselves. And uh, anyway, that, that I'm, I'm going on a tangent here, but that, I'm really pissed off about that, and I'm annoyed by uh, Petiti, and I'm annoyed by Sankey, and I think I think the world You're will be better without You're kind of pissed off them. today, man. I don't. I, I don't want to say I'm pissed off. I'm in a good, decent place, but I just that 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 fired me up. And I think the NIT has value for some people, and if it doesn't for you, don't play in it. But th- we, they took it away from some of the people. It has value too, and then the people they gave it to don't even want it. I mean, it's just there's so much stupidity in college athletics right now that it drives me absolutely back. Especially when, like I said, when you see the teams that are turning down the NIT, I just don't know how Michigan State. I guess thank God we don't have to worry about it. Is all I should say. Yeah, you know? but if you don't have, if you got. 250 fan bases that stopped caring in college athletics and college basketball, you got a big problem, and that's that's where we're headed. Before we move on, was that your – you had your next one in there, right? Yeah. yeah. Before we move on, I just want to let people know, too, we will have a bracket challenge, a Couch in the Rube 2024 bracket challenge that we'll get out uh, this evening. We're, this is obviously Monday, Monday evening. Uh, presented by our friends at Midtown Brewing Company. We're going to do both a men's and a women's, so two to, two to play in. Uh, and Midtown's doing some cool stuff. The winner, uh, will we'll have a couple prize packets for first, second, and third place, including Midtown, uh, Midtown Brewing Company uh, gift cards, and and some other things. Some couch in the roof swag. Let, let Therese know just in case she's not not aware. Um, <laughs> she does now. Uh, and then first place winners will also get the opportunity to have that corner booth where Jason and I were for the live show. Up to six of their friends, hundred dollar food tab um, to just. Eat, dine, be merry, and, and, and have a great night at, at Midtown Brewing Company. That's for the first place winners uh, of both the men's and the women's Couch in the Roo Bracket Challenge presented by Midtown Brewing Company. Uh, as always, that's 402 South Washington Avenue. And you don't have to wait to win uh, to go check out their menu to watch NCAA tournament games. Underrated place to watch college basketball. Great beer selection. Cozy vibe. Love the American Stout beer. Terrific menu. Um, go to midtownbrewing.net. To check more, you can check them out on on Facebook as well. Um, the last thing I'm gonna want to get into a little more positive. The only reason I want Michigan State basketball to lose early is I really want to be at Mun Ice Arena on Saturday night. Cockburn tickets are go- are pretty high, aren't they? Pretty amazing. Yeah, I want to see MSU versus Michigan with the Big Ten tournament championship being played there. I want to see that vibe. I want to feel that energy. It was incredible this last Saturday night. Yeah. Against Ohio State, I can only imagine what it's going to be. Obviously, there's some there'll be some pressure and some nerves. Having it be Michigan makes it feel like you know, there's more on the line, and there is for Michigan State in the sense that they got a chance still at a one seed. They'll need some things to happen. They're not going to fall out of being a two, um, but it's uh, just going to be a really cool night on campus with the gymnastics. Um, Big Ten championships going on at the same time. The MHSA girls state finals will be going on. It's actually going to be a mess. I would get there early if you're going, and I would figure out your traffic patterns because MDOT fucked up with the uh, starting of the US-27 uh, construction, and it is going to be a little bit of a snarled mess. Not Again, I, how did they not see the Michigan State hockey coming, they, though? They, They're going to be good this year. Well, it's it's having the three M-dot. events at once. I, let me do the logistics for people. I just want to do more. I, it's, this stuff drives me nuts as a logistics person. Anyway, what is your final hot take? Uh, no, we're good. I, it was just about the, the, the MAC championship game, but I think everybody's talked about the Kent <laughs> State player. And the MAG championship where they're up one, but he he didn't know what the score was. I don't know if you saw the highlight of this. I didn't this. see it, no. Okay, so Kent State played, uh, who did they play? Toledo? No. Bowling Green? I don't know. Hold on. Let me, let me, uh, let me just pause. Against Akron. Kent State versus Akron. Oh, that's Sorry. a great rivalry. They took a 61-60 yeah. yeah. lead in the closing seconds. Then Zips guard Greg Tribble uh, wove up the court. Kent State guard Julius Rollins, seemingly forgetting his team led by one, fouled him with five seconds to play, and they end up, uh, they hit the two free throws and end up losing the game. I mean, that's, how do you not know what the score is as a player? Like, I've never played MAC level 
basketball, but right, I mean, you would know the score, I would think. You you should. There's a scoreboard. Is that on board. the coach? There's a scoreboard there, too. There's a, a giant scoreboard, yeah, sure. It's not, it's not like pickup ball where in pickup ball, when you need a break, you call out the wrong score and then people oh. fight over it for like a minute and then you can get your breather and your back. Ready I felt to go. bad for the dude, but then I was sitting there thinking, I'm like, how the hell did you not yeah. know what the score was? So anyway, it's not I just a, don't know how that happens. Not ideal. Not ideal when there's a giant scoreboard. Maybe it's 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 too uh, directly ahead of you or something. Maybe you didn't. Uh, it's uh, it's not uh, not great. All right, uh, let's. Uh, you ready to dig into these listener yeah, hot takes? Yeah, man. Eric Schultz up first. MSU will beat Mississippi State by ten plus, then lose to North Carolina by ten plus. Contrary to what Graham thinks, the Heels aren't scared of playing a home game versus a fourteen loss MSU team, and they shouldn't be. They've got better veterans, more seasoned veterans, and a bona fide big who can score and rebound. I don't, scared is probably a strong word. I don't think they're scared of MSU. I don't think anybody should be. I just think there are more favorable opponents to play in the second round than MSU. I think Mississippi State, which may beat MSU, is probably one of those. I think if you had a beer right now with uh, Hubert Davis, the coach of North Carolina, he would tell you, I'd rather play Mississippi State than Michigan State in that second round. That's all it is. I just think there are... How many beers does Hubert need to drink? I don't even know if he drinks, but I would just say three before he told you it was that. Right. Three three beers. three Maybe three American Stouts, you know, feel good. Yeah. Um, is that it? Uh, so, so, yeah, sorry. I lost my, my, my train of thought. But, yeah, and I don't think they're scared. And uh, it's not... A, this could very much happen, though. This could absolutely happen. I don't think it's likely Michigan State beats North Carolina. I just think it's... Uh, more likely than against any of the other one seeds, and I think the one seeds would rather play some other eight nines and sevens and tens in the world than, than Michigan State. Dominic next. Don't feel bad, Jason. I didn't know Courtney Green's name either until I searched for it. Used to call him Buff Obama ref, but the woke mob came for me, <laughs> headed by Couch. Bake take. Couch will take out Lats, and him and Elizabeth will take him to a rooftop hangout at the Graduate and share drinks with Gretch and Andy Shore. Graham will voice his disdain for the 120 or 127 construction. <laughs> Already done. <laughs> while Elizabeth does a deep dive into Chad's formative teen years. <laughs> Bonus take. I'm not going to bring up the transfer portal failures as one time as a one time courtesy to Couch. Appreciate you, Dominic. The uh, I think Dominic's feeling okay today. He's he's glad they're in, and uh, I think there's a I think there's a pretty good sigh of relief. I mean, whether you were on you know whether Peer Options was helping you night along or not. Um, it, I think there was a pretty good sigh of relief at, at the end of it all. Uh, JD next. Izzo and the team's reaction to getting, the, uh, getting in the NCAA tournament confirms the program standard has dropped to, to just making the tourney. And bonus, UConn will be the only number one seed to make the final four. So, and I do like UConn um, a lot. But the, the only the, – well, here's where I push back on that, J.D. I think being relieved that you're in when, you, when, it, when it gets that dicey. I think if the reaction had been – like, so the brackets come out and the first ones unveiled, like the women right away knew they were in and knew who they were playing. They're like in the first bracket. If that had happened, or even the second bracket, I, and, and the reaction had that level of enthusiastic relief, I think you, you know, maybe you're, you're on to something. But to me, when it gets to the last bracket – and you're seeing, you know, it, FAU's an eight seed. You're like, well, what's that? And then, you know, you're like, what? I, I just think that part of it is you want to be, you want to be in the dance. You played all year for this. This is what you know. This is the bare minimum. And you, there is l literal relief. And I don't, um, I don't think that proves that the standard is dropped. Did they not want cameras in? No, I mean just that's for the, the awkward thing. moment or something. Yeah, they, I mean they had cameras. They later. Had they had in-house cameras that they later <laughs> tweeted their own thing out, whereas if they had not made it, they could have just burned the footage. Yeah. But they, they, yeah, we were not allowed up there. The president was up there, school president. The uh, you know Alan Haller was up there. Um, you know, so there's still been some awkwardness. But they didn't. Uh, yeah, they didn't want any outsiders to, to take was part. Slurry cl like climbing in the vents to try to like hear anything up in the ceiling. <laughs> that would have been great. <laughs> Joel Voss next. The Sweat Sunday couch referenced in his three quick takes will count as triple sweat equity for the next year's team. There is something. I mean, you don't want to feel that again. Um, you, I mean, I, I don't know how much, you know. I, I mean, I think there's greater sweat equity in what you do in the, in the tournament. I think there's greater value for a guy like Xavier Booker in these next this next game or games or what, whatever it is in, in those experiences I think this is where it stinks that the guy like Jeremy Fears isn't able to play because 
having that experience. Now he'll be on the road with them, and there's there's some of that, you know. But I think I think this stuff does matter, and the adrenaline of it, and r- raising your level, which some of these guys have done before. I think all that matters. David Zondi next. I'm more pissed that a few Detroit media outlets didn't mention the women's tournament in their morning newsletters, uh, Axios, Axios, and WDIV. Then how seeding in the tournament does or doesn't work. Let's do the better thing and cover both. And bonus, count me in the good that uh, conference tournaments should account for nothing in the NCAA tournament. No bids and no seeding changes. The regular season is in the perfect tool to use. Yeah, no, I look, if you're a regular season champ, especially anywhere where your team gets, where, where your uh, champion could get left out, you've got to rethink your conference tournament now, even the Missouri Valley. And to me, fuck TV. And I know the Missouri Valley has that great deal with CBS and they play it a week ahead of time. I would look seriously at a double elimination deal with just your conference champion. Everybody else plays the tournament to meet the conference champion from the regular season, and that team's got to be beaten twice, sort of like a baseball double elimination playoffs Jeez. deal you see in college. Because you got to put more value in, into what Indiana State did. Um, to, the, to the point with the women's basketball, I think people are going to get on board. This is a business, right? And – while there is some element, and, and we try to do this as well, of being fair and, and equitable, and, and but interest drives decisions, and there is more interest in women's basketball than ever, and I think some people are just late to, to realize that. Now, we're, we're a little different. We're in Lansing. We're going to cover Michigan State women. We do all year. Um, it certainly helps us that they're an hour and a half away. Uh, helps me get to both, but it it's, um, I, I think that some places are just behind. You're going to see more and more. But we're doing, for the first time ever, like here on Couch in the Rube, we are doing the Couch in the Rube bracket challenge for both the men's and women's tournament uh, presented by Midtown Brewing Company because we just feel there's enough. It's That's not just because, hey, the MSU women are in it. They've been in it before when we've been doing the show. We just feel like there's, there's a lot of interest there, and it could be fun to do, and I, w- I want to do it. So we're, we're, we're doing it. All right. Shaggy Cheek. Chick, whatever. I'm starting to think that the Big Ten is the best conference in the country. And from Professor, the Big Ten puts four teams in the Sweet 16. Baked uh, take from Professor. Uh, Sporks should be more universally used. If they didn't look like a fat kid with a Bart Simpson haircut, (laughs) they might be. What's your take on Sporks? If they're available, I'll use it. Yeah. Why wouldn't I? I just don't see them very often. It was really an elementary school thing I remember most in the cafeteria with Sporks. It's true. And uh, but they undervalued. You can get a lot done with a spork. You know they trusted us with sporks. Not much else. Yeah. But, but a spork, they would. Uh, yeah, they would, they would. But why wouldn't you want a spoon and a fork like combined? I don't. What's the harm? No, it seems like a, it seems like an efficient use of of, of silverware. I'm I'm, I'm 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 totally there. The idea that the Big Ten is the best conference in the country, even the NCAA tournament doesn't always prove that. But I do feel like when you have an elite team like Purdue, that's come up short before, and there have been questions about whether having big men the way the Big Ten has often played through them more so than this year is the right way to go. This is an important year for Purdue. It would be it's it would be really good for the Big Ten to have a couple Sweet Sixteen teams. Uh, four teams in the Sweet Sixteen would be, would would really send a message that this team this year was better than people realized, which could happen. There are some interesting teams uh, in matchups. I mean, you know, Wisconsin's playing well enough; it could happen. Uh, Illinois obviously playing well enough, and you never know with an MSU or Nebraska. Somebody could somebody could make that move. Rambler Dog, 97 next. I've been burned by Midwest teams before, but I have, or Mountain West, excuse me, but I have Utah State making the Elite Eight. What I've seen from them this season is electric. And bonus, Kentucky wins it all. This is this is what's fun about the brackets. Everybody's, you see a team during the year, you know, do you like them? And you're all of a sudden like, I'm kind of going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take that. UAB? That's what's going to take down my bracket. UAB is going to be the yeah. team you're, you're in? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll have that uh, up tonight. Um, the um, uh, the bracket challenge. Sorry, I'm a little little fritzy there. Can we fix that fritz and post? Like that I would can, be a yeah. good like minute of of me just stumbling over myself. We will have the bracket challenge presented by Midtown Brewing Company up uh, this evening. Alan Perlstein next. The Spartans will shoot over forty percent from the field and the th- and th- the three to beat Mississippi State. Then, as our hopes of a tournament run emerge, they will just completely shit the bed against North Carolina. Could happen. I mean, all these things are. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know what to, how to comment this. This seems like Could a go reason- either way. This is not a uh, uh, Alan. I would say this is a reasonable take. Yeah. T uh, T K next. Trey Holloman is already in his ideal role for this for his skill set. 
His versatility is his greatest trait, and MSU would be better suited continuing to use him as a sixth man. Yeah, I mean, right, well, moving forward after this year, mm-hmm. keeping Trey Holloman as a sixth man, um, he's not going to want that. And I think he's grown enough that he's probably going to be one of your guys you want starting. That that said, I I don't hate it because I do like the idea of Jaden Akins at the two along with Jeremy Fears and Holloman being your first guard off the bench with both those guys and playing well. You know, we'll see where that goes. And, and uh, my guess is Holloman starts next year just because he's playing so well and he'll start in a backcourt next to Fears. And those two like playing off each other. But I think what's best for Akins might be to be the two guard. And so that, that'll – That'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Kurt Wisniewski up next. Year 26 in a row for MSU basketball, but it's James Madison University to the Final Four no matter what. I do think that would uh, – James Madison making a run, and they got a – what do they have, Wisconsin right away, um, would be something I – mean, Wisconsin beat the shit out of Michigan State twice too, but would be something that would sort of validate a lot of things in MSU season, right? Would it? Well, I don't know. All those would. missed shots we can put on James Madison. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Jack Hockelot, boy, I thought MSU was out. I saw Virginia and panicked. It would have ruined a few days for me. I'm glad MSU has a big brand and other fan bases are mad about it. Yeah, look, I think there was a lot of panic. I started to, I mean, I, I wasn't panicked, but I started to think, like, what sort of evening is this going to be? Like, I, well, with Chad Latz or? Come on, come on. Yeah, you know, Chad, Chad wasn't even on the mind yet, and it probably should have been. I, I was more thinking, what's what's Izzo going to be like? What's I mean, look, they haven't been in NIT since I was 16, 17 years old. 17 years old. Mm. It's a long freaking time not to be in an NIT. And I remember, I think I went to an NIT game that year. I don't think I went the previous year because I was uh, playing Judas and Godspell, by the way. Mm. Um, yeah, back in uh, back in my musical days. Bo McJunkins, Izzo finally said, this isn't the re- the season I hoped it would be on Sunday. If he would have said this much sooner, instead of being cranky at cranky at fans in his press conferences, it would have helped take the heat down a little bit. And bonus, Graham nailed it in the quick takes. Sweating this much shows missing the tournament was not a good outcome for anyone. And it still may light the fire to fix the holes in this team. No, these are really good from Bo McJunkins. I, I, you know, I, I feel like Izzo saying there, there needed to be, I mean, and he said that to some extent that they've struggled more than he thought and things like that, but it was the tone and it was the tenor of it and it was, this isn't the season I hoped it would be, I, you know, and it wasn't the season he expected. I, I think he, he did need to kind of say that at, at, at a certain point and, and it did help. I mean, meeting the fan base where they are is everything in sort of creating a vibe. Well, it was not everything. Winning is a lot of things, but in creating the vibe between a, a, not just you and the fans, but the team and the fans, and being as, being as explanatory as you can be. You know, one of the things that would have been helpful, he talked to, today about Jackson Kohler's injury, and the more I learned from them just about what they thought Kohler and Booker early on, even when Booker wasn't ready, how much Kohler helped Booker, and that they thought that could be a tandem, and then that was taken away with, with – the, the Kohler injury. Now, look, that's not going to make you have an all-conference big man. That's not excusing not going into the portal. But when you explain those things in detail, it helps. All that stuff helps. And and I thought he was he was good. He, um, I, Tom Izzo sounded like a man who had uh, just swung by pure options and let him know. <laughs> had been listening to Couch in the Room and said, I, I want the free eighth. Uh, I'm going to spend 50 bucks. And, uh, let, and let, then he let, swung let, by Hawaii Spa. And that's where he got <laughs> excitement from. Uh, Travis Maynard next. Since November, this team's been shooting with the weight of the tourney streak on their shoulders. Now that the monkey is off their back, the shots are going to start falling. MSU is about to spend the house, spend that house money, and go on a run, baby. Yeah, it's. It, are you in our contest? I want to make sure, Travis. Yeah. <laughs> it will be interesting because a lot of times in towns like this, when you're doing a bracket and MSU is predicted to be really good, the best way to win the bracket is to zag and not pick MSU to go very far. And if they do, you lose the bracket. But so what? A lot of people have MSU going too far. Like there will be a, a lot more people with MSU in the Sweet 16 than in this town, in this community, in this fan base than there will, you know, anywhere else in the, in, in the country. Because if your bracket's done, MSU's still playing, so at least you have that going for you. Yeah, you have the bracket. Something's I, I, going on at least. You know, the idea that they're able to play free and easy, 
we'll see. I mean, I think losing right away, I think one and done for this team would feel pretty damn disappointing from where this year was supposed to be. I think the free and easy take your shot, you know, obviously you got to play with intensity. I think North Carolina is a little more of that, you know, and uh, even though people will be disappointed in how this turned out, the fact they were a nine seed, the fact they had to play North Carolina right away, the fact that that team was better than them if if that proves out to be, people have seen that all year. They'll brace for it. If they get if they lose right away to Mississippi State, it'll be like, yeah, this team just, just didn't have it, and they'll be ready to be done with them. Uh, Sports Guy 1919. This team will fail because they run an offense for jump shooters and they can't shoot worth a shit. Hogard, mid-range, mid-range jumper, any center post-up touch is pretty much a turnover. You're not wrong. Like, Hogard doesn't hit a lot of those. And, and you know, we had a, a listener who put a Hogard shooting chart, sent it in with one of his tweets. Really good thing because it did what it did show, and, and this has turned out to be true, is Hogard is actually a pretty good three-point shooter from the corners and the sides. I mean, really good statistically for whatever reason. He's comfortable there. And so when they have Tyson Walker handling the ball or Holloman handling the ball and they have Hogart off the ball in the corner, that's actually not bad, not a bad way. And then sometimes he'll come off a pin down or whatever and try and drive as he catches and goes. That That's that's not bad offense. The, but when he pulls up, you're right, it's 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 only slightly better than uh, throwing the ball into Sissoko. Palm Trees and Sun up next. During the selection show, Izzo looked relieved when MSU was selected. I believe now that the pressure is off. They could nut up and put together a serious run like last season. I know it sounds like I've been gobbling on a bag of gummies, but I believe it to be possible. Yeah, yeah we'll see. Gobbling, I, gobbling yeah. on a bag? Man. Yeah. I, the first time that I ever um, had edibles, mm. I didn't know that you were only supposed to have, like, one. And... I was lucky that somebody explained it to me just before I like snacked on a bag of edibles. Is that a joke? Or what do you mean? No, no, no. Seriously, this so made you, it's been you a eat? long time. No, I had one. I understood the MGs thing. Oh. But I was with somebody. I was like, ah, oh, cool. I was gonna eat the the edibles like freaking gummy worms or popcorn or something, and just you know, and then go into a trance. I mean, you've been there before when it's you've done a little. Yeah, too but much. I knew what I was getting into. Sure, right, right. No, the, that Mexico this, trip. I was running running on a hundred MGs at some points there. Yeah, no, because yeah. my earliest experiences with, with weed were all were all smoking, and then like when I first got edibles, I was already an adult, and so I didn't. You sound like you're on an after school special, trying to sound like you're. No, I, weed yeah, guy. It's, I'm glad pure options chose and then, us. Uh, hey, yeah. I am no, uh, yeah, no stranger to the ganja. <laughs> Russell B. Next, even though it's a relief to keep the 26 year streak going, it's also deflating to know this team won't make it past the first weekend. The reports say both Mississippi State and North Carolina have solid defenses. Mississippi State also has a solid big man. Both areas we struggle with. Maybe the NIT would be a better fit. The NIT is never a better fit. Fucking send this to the moon. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's never a better fit, <laughs> Russell. You deal with what you what. Uh, no way. Yeah, and and maybe that's the best thing about playing Zach Eady in your last game. You know who appears small after playing Zach Eady? Everybody. Like, there's nothing worse than Zach Eady. He's the worst. Uh, David Jackson. Joe Lenardi, having picked MSU to miss the tournament, even before conference tournament upsets, should have dropped MSU even below the first four out. Yet we end up a nine. Lenardi knows nothing and should lose his platform. <laughs> should lose his platform. And from Chris Eastlick, bracketology is meaningless or this committee was awful. The seating doesn't seem to have any method to it. Yeah, I mean, Lenardi has the biggest platform, but he's not the best bracketologist in terms of, which is a weird word as it is, but when you look at just how many people get it right year after year, Lenardi's not anywhere. He's not even like the top half of the people who do it seriously. I mean, he's just not. So he's ESPN, but he's not that great at it. And Jerry Palm kind of screwed it up initially because while MSU wound up being a nine seed and eventually had him there, like Jerry Palm had them like out of the tournament almost. Before the Ohio State and Iowa losses, which based on how they were playing, there was no way you predicted those. It wasn't. Ken Palm didn't predict it. Nobody predicted that. It happened, and it put them right in line with some of the projections back then. But if you had Michigan State on the bubble back then, you don't know what you're doing. You didn't. You didn't. You didn't. You didn't. So um, bracketology was – this was a little bit of a struggle bus. And, and I think a lot of it, though, had to do with – the bid stealers late, getting five bid stealers when there had only been, what, three in the last two years combined. And so you you had a number of teams on the bubble, more teams that you thought were in 
until the final weekend, and now we're trying to figure out who was out. And the 13-win Brown team almost got in. Yes, they should have, actually. Uh, Ken Chu next. Mun needs more men's room uh, capacity. More men's room. Uh, Bake take. When Izzo retires, MSU hires Drew Valentine, and Drew hires Greg Campy as a special assistant. Couple things. One, I Campy's going to be like 80, 81 years yeah. old by then. Yeah, you don't you don't need that. I mean, what, eating it, a chili dog and a Dr Pepper on the bench. I love having Campy around, but uh, I don't I don't know if it, it matters. I the, if you're going to hire Drew Valentine, I think the play would be to do it ahead of time as the coach in waiting, and and I think that's really the the move with any uh, sort of heir apparent situation or any uh, transition now because of the transfer portal. And players knowing who's going to be there and what what it's going to be, you don't want a gap like the transfer portal. Stupidly, stupidly open today. I mean, how dumb is that? I mean, so you the, the transfer portal should not open until the day after the final four is done. And I know there are a lot of people that leaves in the lurch. So be it. You got to reward those teams that are winning, those teams that are doing something. Let them focus on that. The transfer portal should not be open today. Just another dumbass thing in college athletics. God, I mean, just is it a holiday the, or something? Why not? Some of the people. Because if think about this, if okay, let's take it from a Michigan State perspective. You are hoping that Tom Izzo goes out and gets somebody, a big wing, a four man that can rebound, whatever it might be, the tallest man alive, and that person gets into the portal today and starts making decisions and has calls, and so if you you see somebody you like, first of all, you got like. 48 hours to spend time scouting two teams that you really want to beat. Then you go get the tallest man alive. He commits. Your team has just realized you're trying to replace them already. You still got fucking games to play. That doesn't help. Like, it is dumb. It is dumb. And I don't know. There are so many people between the top of the SEC, top of the Big Ten, and there are some smart people in these conferences and smart people in the NCAA. But there are decisions that are made all the time that just baffle me. That it just... You know, again. Then where are the smart people then? That's a great question. Never let anybody tell you you're not qualified for a job. If these people are thinking that, I, I don't, I don't. You're, you're qualified to be Big Ten or SEC commissioner. You are. Just have a better take on the NCAA tournament and, and expansion in college football than Tony Batiti and 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 Greg fucking Sankey. I mean, I'm sorry. I just, I, I just can't do that guy anymore. Huh? Arcan Spartan next. With my tourney sweats over, I'm. Uh, I'm staring at the creamy goodness of NIL challenged Indiana State phenom Robbie Avila, whose coach, jo- too many words, Josh Schertz, is about to walk while Indiana State is left at the tourney altar. Jesus. And, I'm think- and I think, Tom, it's portal time. Take a break on Mississippi State film and call Robbie. Bake take. We've got a defensive Keon Coleman in our midst. As soon as basketball wraps up, Jonathan Smith jumps on Trey Holloman like a spider monkey and starts him at safety this fall. And bonus, can I take my payment in donuts? We can certainly make donuts part of any uh, – we'll we will, we'll work with Groovy Donuts to have Groovy Donuts be part of the, um, the package uh, that we do with the Midtown Brewing Company um, Couch in the Room Bracket Challenge. So, yes. Payment in donuts is always always possible. We prefer to pay. I prefer my payment donuts. In fact, the LSJ pays me in donuts. That's part of the reason I look the way, the way I look. Um, you're not. You, Trey Holloman wanted to be a safety. Wanted to be a defensive back. Never going to happen at this point. But uh, Jonathan Smith did talk today um, after Tom Izzo. Yeah. What did you learn? Three quick takes. I, the one thing I really liked about him, and football is awkward right now because I don't give two shits. And uh, but I think he's aware of that, and it's just it's a weird time because one of the, my favorite things about the MSU fan base is they are cyclical. As much as they love MSU football in the fall, and it is everything to them for a while. Right now, their focus is elsewhere, and they can't really do two things at once. They don't do it well, and I appreciate that about them. So you know, it's kind of a waste of time to be writing about them at this exact moment. A few weeks from now, different. But he was asked about uh, Aiden Childs and whether he was definitely the starting quarterback, or whether it would be an upset if if so one of these other guys beat him out. And I, there are a lot of coaches that would say, you know, well, it's, it's an open competition. That's the way we do it. Or, there's, you know, back, yeah, I mean, he's obviously has more experience, but, you know, you got to let it. it. Jonathan Smith just said bluntly, yeah, no, it would be, it would be an upset. <laughs> and they asked if he was ready for it. He goes, well, we're about to find out. Like, there was just a level of candor that I really appreciated, and, and I think that's a good sign for the period of time where we actually do all care about football again, which will come soon. 
Yeah, I don't, I, we don't have enough time for all of that. Luke Bungie next. MSU fortunate uh, it is set up to play two teams with bad offenses and good defenses relative to rankings. Bonus. Kirk Cousins' tenure with the Vikings should give Lions concern with long-term golf extension. Hard to win without elite quarterback play and holes in roster due to quarterback cap hit. I mean, I'm I'm as concerned as anybody, and I think so. You who know are we that. gonna get for cheaper? And that's that's the question. Hand it over to Hendon Hooker and watch golf go somewhere and win. What did you? I've been waiting to ask you about this. What did you think about a fourth round pick for Josh uh, for Josh Fields for uh, for Fields? What's Fields' first name? Larry. Fuck you. <laughs> Justin Fields, yeah. Justin Fields. It's a sixth rounder that could get six rounders. That could move up to a fourth rounder on how how much he plays, but he's going to be sitting behind Russell Wilson. It could be one of the dumber trades I've ever seen. Why not just keep him? I would keep. There's there there gets to a point where you're going like, why am I going to give this player away? Yeah, I'd rather just keep him and maybe you know watch the quarterback battle. I actually let Justin Fields play a little bit, like Caleb Williams kind of swoop in midseason or something. I don't know. I would still draft. If you've decided you want Caleb Williams, still draft Caleb, Caleb Williams. But if all you're getting is a fourth-round pick, keep him for another year. Mike Tomlin's like, what the fuck, man? What's happening? My quarterback room was terrible. Now I got Russell Wilson and then Justin Fields. And I and I, it, I, I actually Which I guess it's an upgrade from what they had. I really like it for the Pittsburgh because I, I, while I think Fields is better and will ultimately take over the job, it it makes – I wonder if Russell Wilson knew it when he when – he, uh, Wound up going there, you know, like I, that they were going to also make that move because I, I don't, I can't imagine. Who I don't wants think that. they they knew that they were going to make that move, right? They didn't yeah. think the Bears were just going to give away Fields for it's nothing. Incredible. Should the Lions gone and got Fields? I don't think they do it in division, but yeah, would would have you done that if you were the Lions? Certainly for a six round pick, I would have. Yeah. I have no idea what Hooker's going to be. Yeah. So why wouldn't you? The pro- the problem with that is I don't know. It's kind of like AJ Hogard with Jeremy Fears. I don't know how good Goff is. If there's an intriguing young quarterback behind him who runs a hell of a it's lot his faster, job. it's his job. Unless there's some sort of like injury or, or he has three bad games like a year and a half ago in a row, and everybody goes, "Well, <laughs> wait a sec, what about the other guy?" Yeah, uh, Cinemod next. All the negative energy around this MSU program. It's okay to criticize, but I can't stand MSU fans hoping we miss the tournament just to add more uh, more gate to this team already. Enough. I'm tired of hearing it. We're all well positioned to make a run at the end of all this. I'm dead inside BS. Bait take. Language. It is just a bunch of nonsensical sounds, <laughs> but over the course of time, we attributed those sounds to meanings and then symbols to represent those meanings. Also, the fact that the brain named itself blew my mind. Cinema, this might be the most baked, purely baked, pure options take we've had yet. Without saying it's a baked take. Yeah. Yeah, that's just, a true big take. Absolutely, I guarantee just you. Fired right it now. out there like it was your own. Yeah, well done, well yeah. done, uh, well done, sir. Yeah, no, I, look, the, um, I think people are all over the place in the fan base. People are frustrated by the fans. They're frustrated by the team. Um, and after yesterday, it's clear you want to get in the tournament. Yeah, but you want to be in the tournament. Yeah, right? I think it scared them enough though. Fart soup. Purdue doesn't make it out of the first weekend. Bonus. Izzo can pound sand. Lats and couch would have blossomed and <laughs> blossomed into a bromance so real and authentic that a Hallmark movie would have been written about it, and now we're deprived of that. Oh man, I didn't even think about that. Mm. A lot of people think that would have been an epic uh, hang. It might have been. <laughs> Cul- culminating with both of us getting uh, melting moment sandwiches at a, uh, at a, at a at MSU NIT game together. You I don't know? think you understand how hard it would be to connect lats and graham at the same time it's really hard (laughs) it's really hard what if i just swing by his place dude even that i don't know i don't even know where he well i kind of know where he lives but yeah okay anyway uh beppe plum next having to watch this team play another game is like watching my wife with another man (laughs) i love seeing her in that moment but it feels disgusting (laughs) jesus man uh that is the this team i love them but don't want to see it purely bait uh, wait, what? Don't oh, want to see it. Take, okay, yeah. sorry. Purely baked. Nah, just still stone from being in the womb 45 <laughs> years ago. Oh, well, that's that is purely baked. Yeah, Your mom wow. smoked weed. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, mm. explains it. Uh, suburban Spartan Dad. People saying, "I wish we would have missed the tourney as a wake up call to Izzo." Are idiots. The streak clearly matters to him, but missing out wouldn't magically shock him into changes he wouldn't otherwise make. He's proud, but not stupid. 
you're going to see changes regardless. And bonus, putting Matt Painter and Rick Barnes at the one and two in the same region is a gift. We could see an all-time coaching malpractice clinic in the Elite Eight as both teams do everything in their power to choke away a trip to the Final Four. Yeah, I mean, I really want Matt Painter to get there. I don't know what it is. I don't know. I mean, I don't have the Zach Eady hate that other people do. I think he's a good coach. I think he's been on the cusp of it. I think it's good for the Big Ten. Um, I I, I want to see it. I really want because Matt it. Painter hasn't looked through you when he's talking to you. So that's, that's it. Why you rooting for him? That's it. He is. Okay. Yeah, he is not. Uh, so he's a good guy. Any of the last twelve commissioners of the Big Ten? No, I'm kidding. Some dude. College hockey isn't better, but it's more fun to watch than pro hockey due to its imperfections. More chance, more chances equal more excitement, and the band being uh, in Mun is really something to behold. And bonus. There is always a way to get a great TV matchup early with a lower seed MSU basketball team. So I, I'm I'm with you on Mun. Like in person, and maybe it's just because Mun is such a intimate arena. It only seats like six thousand. Where the press box is for me, it's just you're, it's one of the best views there is. Um, I, it, there is a difference between NHL hockey and college hockey, and you can see it. But it was much more pronounced. I'll be honest. During the years Michigan State sucked, there would be teams that would come in. And you would watch Michigan State try to handle like Minnesota seven years ago. You'd be like, "Holy crap! Like these are two different sports almost." Um, I where Michigan State is right now, it is a fun brand of hockey. It is a fun level of hockey. It's an intimate experience that people are really, really into. I'm, the NHL has that in playoff hockey to some degree, but it doesn't have arenas that small. Um, and what's going on at MSU right now is fun because it's just new again. They've won a Big Ten title. They're winning in ways they haven't for so long. They're really good. They've got an unbelievable freshman goalie. Uh, they're just, it's just a lot of fun to be there. And um, it's its also the perfect setting for a Muscox flannel. I'm going to tell you, I was wearing one on Saturday night. You look like you belong at a hockey game. I'll be wearing one this Saturday, God willing, if Michigan State basketball loses. And uh, I really want to experience that. I Actually, I, I don't want, I, I love the NCAA tournament runs. It's too bad they're colliding at once. But I would love to be um, it, it, it Mun in. By the way, if you want a Muscox flannel, if you want to look like me and Jason, well, that's, see, I can't see. We can fix that in post. If you want to look like your best self, go to gomuscox.com. You can go to gomuscox.com slash spring to check out their latest offerings, uh, hang out in backyard gatherings, on the beach at night, whatever it is when a flannel is just perfect uh, this time of year and moving forward. And, of course, use the Couch in the Roof promo code HOFF, H-O-F-F, for $15 off your flannel purchase. Spartan 8770 next. One. The MSU ver, uh, versus uh, MSU versus Michigan game. Wait, what? MSU versus oh shit. Mississippi State versus Michigan State game Thursday will be played on a runway barge on the Mississippi River. To to shut up MSU Twitter, Izzo will wear a suit and promptly lose Thursday, thus ending any more of this narrative. And bonus, this hockey championship game feels like an oncoming storm. I mean, I've seen this MSU team lose seven one to Michigan, and then the next night be down four one and come back and and win. So like, there's a lot. This uh, this could go a lot of ways. I you know Michigan's playing well. There's a lot of talent. Um, I don't think they're the best coach hockey team, but Ohio State is really well coached. They get the most out of, of who they are. Um, and Michigan State, to be to be fair, if they lose this game, while it'll suck for a lot of people, it's not going to necessarily ruin the season because they're going to go into the NCAA tournament as a two seed. They'll still be Big Ten champions. But the difference between Mun, if they if they win that game against Michigan to win the Big Ten tournament. Just the decimals and the joy coming out of Mun Ice Arena. I, I just I want to see what that looks like. I really do. I think that's going to be something. And um, if you can afford a ticket, I know they're really pricey. Um, go if you can't. I'm glad it's on BTN for people to watch because um, everybody should get to take part in that. Big Ten Plus is ass. Gavin Haas next. Number one, Baylor Sh- uh, Shireman leads Creighton to the Elite Eight at worst two. Uh, Michigan State wins the battle of the MSUs before getting slaughtered by North Carolina. And bonus, making the tournament should never be considered enough for MSU under Izzo. Final fours and national championships are the expectation. Mm. Expectation. It's the, old, the, the podcast Final Four is not on the schedule, right? Is that the whole... Um, oh, pod- yeah. Where is that guy? Is he still doing his podcast? Yeah, it's a great podcast. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> You don't listen, apparently. A lot of people do. They do. Uh, Dude, I can't listen to another MSU podcast. I, I, I get enough of this shit every week. It's, it's a fair point. It's a fair point. It's. Uh, I'm sorry. No, they do a, a, a good pre and post uh, of every game. They do a good job. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, 
to to the point here though it, it you're right i mean and you are of an age gavin where you know nothing but the well, you don't know the best but you're pretty young actually you missed a lot of the good stuff but i do think it's fair to have higher expectations than this year in and year out it's fair to want and to think the program should be able to sustain what it did for the decade before covid where it was pretty much every other year they had a team that was in contention for Big Ten Championship Final Four type team. And and then you can have a year like this in between it and, and everybody's okay. Well, the next year, will, if you're getting like five of those years in ten years, people are okay with it, and it just hasn't been that. Tyson's Fury next. Akins will break out of his shooting slump against the number sixth-ranked three-point defense to lead MSU over Mississippi State. Bonus, fuck all the bractologists for making the last few weeks absolute hell on my mental health. Graham was right. This team was never a bubble team. We should have tied bracketology to pure options. There's no no doubt because uh, I think there was an opportunity missed. Um, but uh, we, but I didn't know that either. I mean, and I don't think people around the program knew it. Um, even people who are really smart and do like Kevin Pauga has the KPI, which is a, you know a, a metrics that a metric that's used by the NCAA committee, not as much as the net. But even he wasn't sure where they'd be. I mean, I think he even thought this could wind up being in Dayton as a, as a play-in game, a 10 seed more like. I mean, it, it was. it's just sometimes hard to read this crew, and I think they were all over the map, the selection committee, more than more than usual this year. J.C. Wills next. Who do you think uh, is hitting the portal for Sparty? Is A.J. back? Marty? Um, Don't do it. Don't do it. Sissoko, don't say he's coming back. No, I don't. I don't do it. No, I think I think have a I good think Monday. It, don't do it. If I if I had to bet, I would say AJ Hogard plays another year of college basketball, but elsewhere. Ooh, that would be my bet. And Mati Sissoko, same deal. That's my bet. Mm. Mati Sissoko, AJ will play somewhere to high major. Somebody is for all that AJ can drive people nuts. He is a high major point guard who can get you places and can do things, and he he will he will define people will want him. He'll he's get average sixteen, this. ten, and five or something. I, yeah, he'll That'd be, be some he'll be somewhere and 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 uh, and then Madi though I think should go play down a level and uh, not Division two. I didn't mean like that, but How I, about I, the MAC where they don't know what the score is. That's a good place apparently. Mojo Jojo MSU wins a rock fight against Southern MSU and goes down to the wire with UNC before disappointing us all in a very meta end to the season. And bonus, Metawar pays their ad fees to spotlight in Prussian <laughs> Franks. Prussian um, Franks. I got my uh, wedding ring, by the way. My wife's uh, engagement ring and both are wedding rings. At, at Not Metawar everything Jewelry. has to be a live read. Sorry. You don't have to make shit up for a live read. No, this, I didn't make this up. I, uh, we don't make shit up here. We don't make shit up. That's true. That's why it works. Just we the are, answers to these questions. Yeah. No. Well, that's 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 a whole different thing. Uh, yeah. yeah. Got to make something up. Christopher D. Next, MSU will have a repeat of last year. Will win, beat a high seed in UNC, then lose a thriller in the Sweet 16 to literally anyone. Trey Holloman and Jaden Akins will each average 11 plus points in the tourney, and Xavier Booker will look like a budding star, creating a top 15 expectations for next year. A bonus. Of all the impressions you guys do, none is more frightening yet entertaining than Jason's Medawar jeweler voice. What is your Medawar jeweler voice? Uh, Medawar in Frandor. Medawar in Lansing. Medawar in Okimos. That is actually wonderful. I love that. That's so good. They, they walk around the house doing that. Yeah. <laughs> That's outstanding. Uh, neurotic pants. There is literally nothing. Nothing this MSU, uh, MSU team could do that would surprise me at this point. If they played as uh, they often have, they could get bounced out of the first round. If they play like they did against Baylor, with a little luck, they could make it to the Final Four. We'll see. And bonus, ever since Mike Tyson lost his edge, I mostly lost interest in boxing. Other blood sport options present themselves. The personalities weren't as compelling, and I've rarely wanted to pay for HBO or pay-per-view. I'm half interested in Tyson's upcoming bout, but I'm not sure why. I don't like seeing old people fight. I don't like it. I didn't like it, although I did like Rocky Balboa. That but movie it is was Mike good. Tyson. And if he does knock this dude out, it would be hilarious. There's just there's a scam going on, though. If you, there, I don't know. If you're our age, I mean, what Tyson was, I mean, he was everything to boxing, right? It was such a big deal. I, did you get to watch Tyson's fights when you were yeah, a kid? Yeah, my dad would get the – he would uh, – because you'd have to go to Comcast and get this little thing look like a CO2 cartridge. Yep. 
And my dad would always have the hookup on those. And they were always like a minute into the fight, you know? Oh, man. That, so I was like in middle never... school. I was like, yeah, but my dad was a single dad, lived in a duplex. Uh, I could stay never... up whenever I wanted to. It was such a big deal when we finally got like past sports and you had to have the AB switch behind the TV and stuff like that. And I t- talked my parents into that uh, the days yeah. before uh, Fox Sports Detroit and everything. At, uh, yeah. That's, Good old days. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, one quick thing before we move on. I, one, Christopher D brought up a point the idea that, you know, Trey Holloman and Aikens have good stretches and Booker looks like a budding star and that creates top 15 expectations for next year. I wanted to ask you this. After last year, where the tournament created a lot of the expectations for this year, that in the recruiting class, is there what's the scenario where people fall for it again? I'm not saying fall for it in a bad way because it may be legit, but all of a sudden they're like, God, next year's going to be a lot of fun. What, what, what would it take for that for you? What, to, in the next week or so? Yeah. To watch to, Michigan to, State? What would it take in this NCAA tournament for you all of a sudden I, to go next year's going to be fun? I don't think that there's really anything that could happen outside of like Trey Holloman taking this team and there's a run or one of these guys that's going to be back a part of the plan for next year, I guess. But I'm just – with Jeremy Fears, I don't – he's not going to play in the tournament whatsoever, so I'm waiting for him next year anyway. So I just don't know what – with a lot of the guys leaving, it's, who knows? I don't know what they could possibly do, right? I think if you get a little bit – you get a 20-point game, something a little different from Aikens. Oh, and well, then, yeah. And then you get, like, some of those dunks that all of a sudden Booker is trying over big men where he's missing but getting fouled or just – but he's trying them and he's aggressive as hell. Like, if he starts landing a couple of those – I got to agree with you, Akins. If he did some things, yeah. I would be more excited because I know he's super bummed out about his play. So, yeah, that would turn it around for him. Uh, Jarrett next. Turny Tate. Oh, we missed uh, Mr. Neurotic Pants. Fuck, Neurotic Pants. No, we just did Neurotic Pants. I apologize. You can't lie to me, too. I'm sorry. <laughs> J- Jarrett, Turny Takes. Number one, Moorhead State over Illinois. Two, Nevada to the Elite Eight. And three, Longwood is the only team that is a 15 or 16 seed to get the first round upset. Jarrett, we look forward to having you in the Couch in the Rube uh, Bracket Challenge presented by our friends at Midtown Brewing Company. I'm going to copy those picks, so we're going to finish one and one. Yeah, but, yeah. Thanks, man. Shouldn't have shared those. Notorious rapper, who wins? Wisconsin versus James Madison. It's an interesting first game. I actually like Wisconsin. I think they're playing well. I think there's. I think they're pretty well built for this. They had a bizarre swoon in the middle of the year where they were not very good. Um, but I... I like Wisconsin. I do. You can't I, have a bizarre swoon. Just can't happen. It was weird. It was a weird swoon, but they're playing well now. They're they're back locked in. Lar- uh, Eric Larson up next. Beware the Drake Bull of the Drake Bulldogs. Tucker DeVries is a potential All American who will atone for his collapse last year against Miami in the first round. Bonus. It is just as likely that all number one seeds make the final four as all three seeds make it. The tourney is wide open. Hashtag chaos. I think it could be a fun tournament. I, I don't know that it's – I do think – I mean, I know Purdue has a history, but I think Purdue's pretty good. Um, I'm curious to watch more at Houston. I think UConn's a- absolutely legit. Speaking of the Final Four is not on the schedule, the Eric is one of the hosts of um, – Eric Larson of the Final Four is not on the schedule. So very much alive, very much still doing his thing. Did he pay for that? He, he did not. Oh, but but you, right. you just questioned his, his – so I wanted to clear it up for people. All right. <laughs> B Parkside next. I think it's a sad state of MSU's program where our March Madness excitement now comes from we made the tournament again this year. I used to think we had a chance of something special every year, even when we didn't. I haven't felt that in years now. You know, um, yeah, I mean, I I think that's the – That's all we got, man. Do you feel different about MSU basketball? How different about MSU basketball do you feel – toward Izzo, toward the program than he did, say, the end of the Cassius Winston era. <laughs> uh, fucking no. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know. know. <laughs> what is the kind of question is that? I don't know. I, I, I'm trying I was to trying get to... through these. You're asking I, me a nine-parter, Ebling. I, I mean, what are we doing? I, I apologize. Let's take a really quick break. <laughs> when we come back, we got many more of your, uh, of your hot takes, some really good stuff still to come. Couch in the Rube, presented by Pure Options Cannabis, and our Monday show by our friends at Muskox Quality Finals. After the Cassius Winston era. Hey, sports fans, are you tired of the same old routine? Looking for a way to unwind after a long day? Look no further than Pure Options, the premier destination for all of your cannabis needs in Lansing, Detroit, Muskegon, and Mount Pleasant. Whether you're cheering for the Lions, Spartans, or the Wolverines, Pure Options has everything you need to elevate your game day experience. And here's the best part. Mention Couch in the Rube when you visit Pure Options and get a free GoPro 8 with a $50 purchase. 
It's our way of saying thank you for being a loyal listener. Swing by Pure Options today and elevate your cannabis experience to a whole new level. Firekeeper's online casino and sportsbook is the site to play from your phone, tablet, or laptop. Get in on all the football action with pre- and in-game wagering. There's showdowns every week in football that you can't miss. Plus, the college and pro hoops are red hot and the pucks are cool. Get your first casino deposit and sports wager mashed up to $500 each. Terms and conditions apply. Must be 21 or older and located in Michigan. Gambling problem? Call the Michigan Problem Gambling Helpline at 1-800-270-7117. Where else can you cheer on your team, enjoy a mouth-watering burger or savory sushi, sip on handcrafted cocktails, or one of 46 beers on tap? Take your game day or date night to Cask & Company Kitchen Bar or Front 43 Neighborhood Pub near Frandor. Two amazing places with one awesome blended modern American-Asian menu. Catch the game on one of 30 60-inch TVs or stop in for the all-you-can-eat lunch buffet. Enjoy happy hour or elevate your night out at Cask & Company or Front 43 on East Saginaw in Lansing. Find Couch in the Room podcasts on Spreaker, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, YouTube, Facebook, Google Podcasts, CastBox, and the Room's favorite podcast addict. Couch in the Room presented by Pure Options Precision Crafted Cannabis. Uh, If you are looking for a good experience with uh, quality cannabis, with Great customer service with a store that that feels like a uh, just a good vibe and uh, a good space. Um, Pure Options is your place. Go to pureoptions.com. Check out the location information nearest you. If you're in the Lansing area, there are several places around here. And let them know Couch in the Rube sent you. Again, with a, um, with a purchase of $50 or more, you get an eighth of ProGrow, uh, a terrific Pure Options in-house brand. And also our Monday afternoon show presented by Muskox quality flannels look good, feel good. Uh, spring, this is perfect time for a muskox flannel. Perfect time to uh, to improve your wardrobe, improve your comfort, improve your look. Again, go muskox.com and the promo code HOFF for Couch and the Rube listeners for $15 off a flannel purchase. Uh, Sparty Rick next. MSU Hockey will get a one seed in, N- in the NCAA tournament with a win on Saturday. They need to expand Munn. Bonus, MSU Hoops is in the tourney because of a blue blood bias in TV ratings. Bakes, the Red Wings are cooked, and the Iser plan is falling apart in year five. They finally won again, but for a while, I was, what the hell happened? I know they've had you know a couple key injuries and stuff, but man, not. Uh, I, I, I had a, a, a bet on the Red Wings season win total that I thought was safe as could be. Not looking like it now. I don't, are they still out of the playoffs as of today? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> thanks for <laughs> thanks for the thanks for the uh, the the answer. Expanding Mun is is not I, look. I think Mun is it's great now that Mun is a place that people want to be, and it's a tough ticket again. I, I you know you don't want it to ever be a place where it's you don't get the atmosphere you get. There are games like this where where it's hard to get in, and yeah, I mean that 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 sucks sometimes. But you you want things to be a tough ticket. You want things to be appreciated. You want to have that environment. MZA next. I actually like this draw for MSU. Obviously, I would have preferred to avoid a one seed as long as possible, but ending up North Carolina, who hasn't been that good lately, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, seems like a good draw. There is an unlikely but not impossible chance they make the Sweet 16 and bonus. The Rube should do a live on-air demo of the entire Manscaped product line. Hmm. I don't know if I want to be here for that. I mean, butt naked, or should I have, like, that's the thing. Fake hair demonstration, like on my the outer side of my clothes. Or do we get Manscaped. like a mannequin? Yeah, but that's no fun. A mannequin. I I'm just saying. I shave a mannequin. Well, there could doesn't be even a, have any genitals. It's you just, could have a hairy mannequin with genitals. They have to be genital mannequins with genitals for places like Manscaped. I can't argue that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tyler, next MSU got the breaks that it probably didn't deserve, and bonus. The only way to win is if you are in the building. Just like when a redheaded, pale, and chubby middle schooler, Graham Couch, hit the road to ball at auto. You got me wrong. I was a blonde uh, and still in great shape back then. I could eat everything I wanted. That's part of the problem is as a kid, I couldn't put on weight and I could just have anything. Uh, but you had a redheaded attitude. I did. I did. Blondie, I, but yeah. But I appreciate where you went with that, Tyler. Uh, MSU did get the breaks that... It may have. I mean, MSU got the breaks in this one. There's no. There's no question. I don't. I don't think it's the Izzo cachet though. You're. You're. You're ten lines 
off the the cut line. They're 10 spots off the cut line. That's not like a fluke deal. There have been other years where they've been closer to the line, other teams that were worse. Um, And there have been, frankly, MSU teams that deserved better than they got. And uh, this certainly, though, wasn't one of them. David Cox next. I'm jumping ahead, but uh, that point guard on Perdont is mid at best. He's going to be uh, be on the struggle bus next year, and I will love it. Sounds gambling related. I, yeah, I, he's really good, and I was worried when he got hurt at uh, at the at the Big Ten tournament. Um, Why well, you had money on it? No, I just think that you know i I wanted I want Purdue. I, I hate when people get hurt in those situations, a game they didn't need to be playing, you know, and um, that's, I mean, it looks like it's just a calf injury or something, not, but Braden Smith is the most consistent, um, I mean, he's a first-team All-Big Ten point guard. He's just really, really good. Clint won Ball Bainey next. Love the new podcast cartoon artwork. Glad to see Graham told the artist to give me a chiseled jawline and make Rube look like Hank Hill. Bonus. We got lucky to be put out west. It's the tamest of the four regions, and bonus, bonus. Purdue wins three games and bows out early again. They are Gonzaga with different jerseys. Appreciate the compliments on the uh, cartoon artwork. That was done by by Pure Options, by the yeah. way. So uh, we'll, we'll pass along the compliments. And I did ask for the chiseled jaw. I, it's one of the requests. I did see that. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> It's kind of accurate. But My yeah. only regret is if I'd, known, if I'd known that day, that was the day I, I originally began. We were doing the live show over at the Midtown Brewing Company, and I had uh, not this muscox, not muscox flannel, but uh, another one on and spilled coffee on it and had to go to the Michigan game that night and just put a vest on over a shirt. I would have made sure I was in a muscox flannel if I'd known we were doing like our, you know, our the images of us, you know. But uh, I'll take the chiseled chin any anytime. NPC softball dad next. Yeshiva York College softball is my Roman Empire. All right. Last week, York outscored the Max 79 37 over the four games. Yeshiva walked 26 batters and committed 17 errors. Sounds amazing. <laughs> Big take Michigan State women upset South Carolina in the second round and have a Sweet 16 matchup with Indiana's GOAT and Gorham legend Mackenzie Holmes. Yeah, Gorham Maine. Uh, Mackenzie Holmes, great player. I, they're, that is a bake take. Upsetting South Carolina is um, – there is not sure money in this world in gambling, but uh, – and I'm not going to bet against Michigan State because I'm going to be covering the game. I'm going to be courtside there, and I'm kind of excited about it. But uh, it, it's sure money. Like, <laughs> Well, I don't, I don't want to say it because now it looks like – no, no, I shouldn't say it. I'm not going to encourage people to bet against a Michigan State team I really enjoy watching. But South Carolina is – at an absolute uh, another level. Jay Riemann Schneider, this past Michigan basketball season was worse for me than the 2020 football season. So as strange as this may sound, I think I had more happiness about 2 p.m. Friday hearing that Jawan had been fired than I did when the clock struck zero and Michigan won the college football playoff. Bonus. Michigan and Jawan Howard failed each other. Uh, Michigan, Michigan's lackluster basketball NIL and stringent transfer requirements in today's college sports hurt Jawan who went out and got players, but his anger and lack of uh, engagement, slight nepotism, and other factors due to his inexperience as a coach did him in. Uh, look, yeah, I mean, Juwan Howard, Michigan basketball has some decisions to make. The, the NIL situation is a, a real issue there. It really is. I mean, there's nobody on Michigan State basketball who makes less, as far as I know, than what Hunter Dickinson made in NIL a year ago when he was there. Like, so 12th man, Michigan State. So a million making, dollars? No. No, no, oh. no. But Hunter Dickinson was making less than 100K, right? That's what he said. I mean, that was part of the, the issue. And so they, we got issues there. The transfer requirements are um, are tricky, and that's something they got to think about. And, and it's easier with grad transfers. It's it's something they choose with their undergrad stuff, too. They're, they're, yeah, you've got to decide what you are and, and – and how much you want to bend the rules for athletes. And to this point, they haven't been willing to go to certain places. Couch on fire. Number one, hockey is back. Mun will be crazy Saturday night. Two, 26 is 26. They always say that MSU has the second longest streak, but it's all uh, Izzo streak. Give the man the credit and no cheating before they made it all legal. And three, the women were underseeded, but tough draw with South Carolina. That's a, yeah, it's a nasty draw. But I also think it's a cool experience. Like, Michigan State's women's basketball team this year for this group of, of players too who really wanted to get to a tournament, it 
in some ways, yes, it would be amazing to get to a second weekend. And if that's where that matchup was, was that would be more fun. But I also think part of getting to, you know, to get to be on the biggest possible stage, you've already played Caitlin Clark, right? To, to get to play the number one team in the country, a 32 and 0 team to sort of see where you stack up. I, I, um, I, I don't I don't hate it for them. It, 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 you know, I, I think it's kind of a fun opportunity, even though it's almost a certain end. Uh, Jimbo Jones, Izzo calling Booker's number out of a timeout to tie the game with a three against Purdue was the best play of the year if it went in. People would have gone nuts. If they beat Purdue because he hit a game-tying three there, it would have been – it would have felt like um, they're finally yeah, – yeah, the whole vibes would have been really interesting until they lost to Wisconsin the next day. Cracker sofa. Booker will play. Uh, Booker will play. Will play. Need to oh, play. Need to play. Need to play. Sorry, Booker will need to play eighteen plus minutes, and Aikens needs to hit four threes each game to make it to the Sweet Sixteen. Oh, that's it. Baked MSU basketball wins more NCAA tournament games than MSU hockey. I mean, it's possible. Hockey is a is a sport where the puck can bounce the wrong way. You can be really good, and you can be done. And I'm going to start writing about this because I've been absent from the college hockey scene for a while because MSU hasn't been very good, but it's time I fixed it. And uh, you can't, you cannot have single elimination in the first two rounds of, of the NCAA tournament. It's, it's absurd, ridiculous. I don't know. I mean, there's just, apparently there's so many things in college athletics that need to be fixed, but this is one of them, and, and we're going to get into it. Original Dark Mantonio next. Damn admissions. Michigan could have had the Pac-12 player of the year and the second best player in the Big Ten this year. These kids come to play ball, not school. Bonus, please. We love Beeline. Absolutely bring him in as a consultant, but when he's not the answer at co- coach for Michigan, he's older. The game has changed since he's left, and more likely it wouldn't end well for him or the program. Would hate to see his good standing be tarnished in any way. You know what I'd love to see, and I don't. they're not going to do this. I would love to see uh, Saudi Washington have a chance to be the coach there. Now he's a Sexton guy, and Lansing Sexton like him a lot. But with Beeline as an assistant, Beeline's in his seventies. He's not. I doubt he's going to do. But Beeline is still a hell of a basketball mind. He still knows that program. He still knows that place. So does Sadi, a Beeline guy. Um, like to me, I, I, I wouldn't mind seeing Beeline on the bench for whoever the coach was in a, in a some sort of advisory role, um, because he does understand that place. And and uh, now, it's not like the place was a complete disaster the whole time uh, that Howard was there, but. But they need a bit of a reset. Joshy next with a purely baked take. If MSU basketball bans uh, Fieldhouse and pure options for the rest of March, this team makes the Final Four. Seriously, it's the night before Selection Sunday and a player gets in a fight at a bar. Wait, what? What did I miss? Hold on. Give me some Give me some hawk. Wait, I gotta... why, <laughs> you write these out. Like, what? Uh, I love your fake shock. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? I know I typed this like an hour and a half I didn't ago. I type it. I edited it. But I was also, this was during the Jonathan Smith press conference. I was trying to pretend to listen to Jonathan Smith and, uh, you know, uh, do the uh, do, do the hot takes. Um, hold on one second. Where, where is this coming from? I, I'm not going to be able to find it now. There's, there's, but that's, that's who got in the fight? What happened? I, I, um, um, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. I don't know what happened. All right, Jake Hawkins. The committee picked MSU versus MSU because how fascinating it looks and sounds should be interesting. Bullshit that we get to play another North Carolina team in North Carolina if we beat Mississippi State. And bonus, please say the Big Ten Hockey Tournament Championship this Saturday will be on regular BTN. I already looked at ticket prices, and they're through the roof. Maybe if they go lower, I might consider going to that game Saturday. Hope you can, uh, too, Couch, if MSU North Carolina can happen. Bake take. Uh, Jason, hope to see you and Treese and your group at the Hideaway Cocktails and Eats tomorrow night for the trivia that I host. We will be there, my friend. That is cool. We will be there. That's really cool. That's Missed the uh, past couple of weeks, but we are going tomorrow for sure. Nice. Good way to support Jake. And uh, Yeah. Yeah, no, that's very cool. The uh, it, it is on BTN, it, you, the Big Ten Championship. So for people who, uh, you know, can't get in, and, and uh, there's going to be more who want to be in than, than can be there. It is going to be on BTN. And, and look, the breaks of being a nine seed is sometimes you play North Carolina and North Carolina. You know, what was worse is when you're Iowa State and you might be better than the 2000 Michigan State basketball team and you've got to play Michigan State at the Palace. That's kind of bullshit. Now, but that's being the one seed, right? You get these perks, and North Carolina is getting the perks here. So Michigan State is deserving what they get. And like I said in my original take, this. Like, if Michigan State does this, if they beat 
a Mississippi State team that's physical, that has a really good big man, and then they beat North Carolina, a one seed in North Carolina, then that is a legitimate run. Getting to the Sweet 16 through that is something to celebrate and, and is something that uh, it's just – it's. It's not being, you know, because this if you're talking about a matchup-dependent team, I don't think MSU, this doesn't look great in certain ways for MSU. And lastly, the Upper Deck Jerk guy. My best take is that Jason brings more to the program than Graham. <laughs> Bonus take. The Spartan fan base needs to hit up pure options and chill out a little bit. We appreciate you, Upper Deck Jerk guy. And I'm well aware that Jason brings more to the show than me. It's not even close. It's uh, I've known that for, for, since uh, since day one. We appreciate all of you and your your hot takes producing our show for us. We appreciate Pure Options. Go to pureoptions.com. Check out the locations nearest you. Swing by. Let them know Couch in the Room sent you. $50 or more. Uh, get you a, a free eighth uh, of ProGrow. Or just go by and, and, and check it out. You don't even have to tell them you are, you know us. You just If that makes you uncomfortable, just go and enjoy the experience. Check them out. Uh, try something and, and have them uh, help you on your cannabis journey here uh, a little bit. We appreciate Muskox, go to gomuskox.com, get your flannel today, look like Jason and I, use the promo code HOFF for 15% off, and of course, Midtown Brewing Company, and the Bracket Challenge will be up Monday night. Good show, man. Yeah, man. We'll be back probably Wednesday, Couch in the Room.